Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Ray Halpin. I'm the Education Recruitment Manager for DIFC in Ireland. Uh, I'm joined today by our Digital Marketing Manager, Nerly Duffy, and then also um, some colleagues from Manchester Metropolitan University in the UK, uh, who we're working on quite closely for a pathway to nursing. Um, so we have Neil Wilson on the line, and we also have Jacqueline Cash here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen just to do a kind of a brief introduction and then I'm going to pass over to my colleagues from MMU to talk a little bit more in detail about nursing as well. So uh, hopefully you can all see my screen there. Um, and really, I suppose, just to start in terms of DIFC um, and just some general pictures of Ireland really to give you an idea of uh, the Irish um, country and heritage. So top left you have Guinness which is our very well known international brand of alcohol and um, it's probably the most famous uh, product that we export all around the world each year. Top right is a picture of St Patrick's Day Parade which is our national day on the 17th of March each year. Uh, and you can just see some picture, a picture of the parade in Dublin in the capital city. Middle left is uh, Kildare Village, which is very popular with all of our students and parents and people who visit Ireland uh, for shopping each year. And um, middle right is an absolute must see. It's the Cliffs of Moher, which is one of the most famous landmarks in Ireland. Bottom left is, I suppose, a hidden gem called Skellig Michael, which until about six years ago was unheard of. Uh, internationally um, but it became famous overnight because it's where Luke Skywalker was hiding in the Star Wars movies uh, and bottom right and I can't do the justice that my colleague narrowly does to Giants Causeway so I always mention that Giants Causeway is famous for uh, where they film Game of Thrones but I know my colleague narrowly has a much more mythical story about Finn McCool and his fights with uh, Ben Donner from Scotland and how the causeway was built and uh, maybe that's something that she can fill you in on another time. So then uh, for those of you joining internationally, uh, just to fill you in, Ireland's a small country on the western side of Europe, very close to the UK um, and a lot of people, why they would choose to study in Ireland, um, there's some specific reasons in terms of uh, we're known as being a very high quality education. Uh, Ireland is known as the land of saints and scholars. We're the only English speaking country in the Eurozone. Uh, quite close connect, uh, connectivity to industry, so a lot of job opportunities. Uh, we've over 160 different nationalities of students, uh, with over 35,000 international students studying in Ireland. Um, and we have a, a work stay back visa, uh, both at undergraduate level and, and postgraduate level which MMU will fill you in on also as the UK have, um, have this too. As I mentioned, we're quite close to the UK, even though we're an island. So 45 minutes from Manchester, London, uh, Sheffield, Leeds, uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh. So the student life in Ireland um, is really, I suppose, a lot of what we do at DIFC is around the pastoral care, helping students to achieve their dreams and get to where they want to go. Um, but we also appreciate, you know, you do need to find that work-life balance. So we encourage students to join the clubs and societies on campus. Uh, we do a lot of regular social events with our students and campus visits throughout the year at DIFC. Uh, and we also encourage people to visit all of the famous places around Ireland um, as per some of the pictures I showed you there a few moments ago. So who are DIFC specifically and what do we do? So we're the largest foundation college in Ireland and we're the exclusive partner in Ireland for NCUK. So both ourselves and uh, MMU are part of the NCUK brand and we deliver the foundation programs to allow students to progress to um, first year medical degrees, first year nursing degrees, which you're gonna hear more about from MMU and over 4,000 different programs at uh, undergraduate level. We also do a pre-master's program and we do a top-up uh, program leading to a nursing degree again, which you'll hear more about from MMU. 
and we have pathways all over the world, uh, Ireland, the UK, and further afield. Uh, we've over 30 different nationalities of students at DIFC, and we do have two campuses in Dublin and Cork, although this year specifically due to coronavirus, uh, we're only running the programs out of our Dublin campus. So from there, I'm actually going to uh, come back out of that, and I'm going to pass you over to Jackie, who will speak to you a little bit more about MMU. So Jackie, I've just made you presenter there now. Thank you. Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening to you all. Uh, my name's Jacqueline Cash and uh, I'm a senior lecturer at Manchester Met University and I'm also the programme lead for the new BSc Honours uh, Nursing Studies top-up degree uh, international. The, um, this is a new programme um, that I've developed with my colleagues at um, Manchester Met University. I've got a 20 year history of um, overseas nursing um, support. Um, I was one of the first in the UK to run the overseas nursing programme um, as a unit of study um, in collaboration with Manchester Met. Um, and I'm a full time lecturer now um, at the university and have been for some time. Um, but I wanted to give you a little bit of background um, in terms of the uniqueness of this particular programme um, for your clients around the world. We're going to launch the course in January 2021 and I've already got 26 uh, offers out from various countries um, across the world. The focus of the course is really um, the academic um, and professional development of nurses with a minimum of a diploma level in nursing in their own country of origin. Um, and obviously it will enhance um, their career opportunities for the UK. So the course really is designed to offer the academic um, degree for uh, nurses from overseas, but also um, an opportunity for them to progress to registration with um, the Nursing and Midwifery Council to enable them to join the UK workforce. Um, I'll just look a bit. Um, so why top up with Manchester? Well, I believe our unique selling point is, um, is the fact that we are preparing nurses to the standard uh, ready for the OSCE test, the final part. Um, but we are um, privileged to have a wealth of interprofessional learning opportunities at our campus in Manchester. Um, obviously, they're going to gain an opportunity um, to understand the UK um, health policy, demographic organisation, uh, ethical and legal care here um, in the UK. And there will be um, visits to practice um, in a variety of settings on each of the units. Also, we're embedding language and academic writing skills throughout the whole of the course. So that is part of the, the educational journey for, for our students. Um, and as I've suggested, there will be exposures to, to practice, although there's no um, clinical practice assessment um, itself. So why the, um, what's the OSCE test? Well, some of, um, many of you will know. Um, uh, that nurses from overseas need to complete um, a particular pathway in order to register. And this has changed recently um, with the NMC's progression, um, but we, um, we are in touch with the NMC and particularly we have a relationship with Northampton University, which is about an hour and a half, two hours drive um, from Manchester. Um, for students at the completion of the course, we're going to help to facilitate uh, the final part of their um, of their exam process if they wish to stay uh, in the UK and register. So a bit more about the course itself. Uh, Unit one, the principles of professional practice, is obviously all about um, thinking about what is the practice and theoretical underpinnings. Um, 
of nursing um, and this will help the student to draw on what they already know from an international perspective and obviously they are partners in learning and we can learn as much from them as they can from us and they can reflect on how their international practice um, can complement professional practice in the UK um, and it's a reflective portfolio that's going to be required in that first unit. Uh, Evidence-based practice comes next and again they'll be comparing and contrasting different parts of nursing in terms of its evidence-based, its origins, its research um, base as well and um, they will have an exposure to, to specific areas of clinical practice to enhance this, uh, this unit. The third unit, uh, Health for All, um, is where they're going to look at the wider aspects of, of, uh, of health, global health as well, uh, inequalities of health, um, and that will again expand their knowledge at graduate level. Um, it's no surprise that developing leadership and professional practice together with accountability uh, and independence uh, as a nurse professional varies around the world and this unit will be embracing that and thinking about how flexible and collaboratively uh, we can work as nurses um, in terms of leadership um, as well. And then the last, the final unit, um, skills for clinical practice. This is the, the unit that will be um, based around clinical skills. Simulation uh, will be its main focus. We've got a wonderful um, high fidelity simulation suite. Um, we've got uh, all kinds of up-to-date and high-tech um, uh, facilities so that um, the student will be able to enhance their clinical performance thinking about uh, the standard required for UK professional registration and that's what we're preparing them for if they so wish. Uh, students can join this course to top up their um, diploma level study to uh, a UK uh, Manchester Metropolitan University degree. However, uh, if they want to go on, we are supporting uh, them to go to a uni uh, the University, uh, Northampton University, to do that final um, part of the test uh, if they so wish. So uh, that's. Uh, now, in terms of the entry requirements, um, obviously we're requiring nurses to have a minimum of a diploma in their countries of origin and um, the, the English requirement is um, OET is obviously acceptable or equivalent. Um, we have a range of things now, as you all know, and the IELTS we've put at 6.5 overall and 6 in writing and we will help the student to progress um, as we are an OET centre now at, at Manchester um, to the requirements if they wanted to, to progress to UK um, professional registration. In terms of developing their employability, we have um, I've gained links with um, one of the major um, uh, agents for the NHS in terms of um, casual working and NHS professionals are going to support students on this course um, to gain professional um, practice experience as a healthcare assistant uh, whilst they're on the course. So this um, will not only help to support them financially um, but will give them exposure to, to UK healthcare. So that's something um, we're going to we're going to organise too. And then there's opportunities of course to um, to go to Northampton and we are working um, with the, the faculty at the moment to support them financially as well um, or partly with the, uh, the final part of the registration process if they want to um, or they may just want to return uh, with these enhanced um, uh, skills and academic level at, at, to degree. And obviously there'll be opportunities for them um, if they are successful and gain registration to get employment um, within um, Certainly, our local trust area um, have offered uh, commitment to this, but also um, the wider UK.
Thank you. Any questions we'll, I think we'll be taking later. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. If you want to um, pass over to Neil now, uh, actually, I can make Neil the presenter. Okay, thank you. So, Neil, now you're in control. Hello, Neil. Okay, just while we're waiting for Neil. Uh, let me So once Neil comes back, uh, I'll get Neil to talk a little bit more about MMU. And uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to talk a bit a little bit about how DIFC can actually help you to get to um, MMU. So uh, at DIFC, um, I suppose this is a really important statistic for you to know is that from our foundation students, our undergraduate students, in 2019, 98% of students got either their first choice or their second choice, uh, their insurance choice university, which means by taking the pathway at DIFC, if MMU and nursing is your goal, uh, you've got a really, really strong chance of getting there. Uh, we've helped over a thousand students progress to university since 2009 uh, and actually 90 percent of our students get their first choice of university and that's across the ncuk foundation uh, program so neil you're back there now are you yes he's he crashed into yeah i'm back in thank you <laughs> okay so hang on a second Okay, so Neil, I'm actually going to pass control over to you now uh, for you just to talk a That's little it. bit more about MMU. Thanks, Ray. That's brilliant. Okay. Um, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Neil Wilson. I'm the um, admissions lead for uh, Manchester Met for the uh, BSc Adult Nursing Programme. So, I'm going to do a brief presentation about our programme. Um, and uh, what that has to offer um, to support um, uh, the portfolio that um, Jackie's already presented. So um, if we um, have a look, uh, the BSc uh, Honours Adult Nursing Programme, our undergraduate programme, sits within the Department of Nursing, um, and it sits within a portfolio of, um, of uh, four undergraduate pathways. Um, so let's have a little look at what the adult nursing pathway has to offer. So nursing at Manchester Met, we have, as Jackie's already said, we have a, um, an amazing department of, um, of nurses um, from a variety of different backgrounds, um, a variety of different uh, workforce settings uh, with um, an immense amount of experience. And we still have very, very close links with clinical practice. 
Jackie talked to you a little bit about our facilities and um, what we actually do at Manchester Matt and I just wanted to share with you very very quickly um, a, a, a video of um, some of our facilities at Manchester Matt and let you have a look at um, what we really have to offer. Um, now I'm not sure uh, I'll play this video um, I'm hoping this will play the sound will play if not you can have visually have a look at um, the facilities that we've got uh, to offer uh, it gives you um, a, a bit more of an idea Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that very brief overview of, of our, uh, the facilities that we've got at Manchester Met and also our practice partners, uh, which we displayed um, within that video, um, some of our clinical placements that we have to offer. So the BSC Adult Nursing Programme is three years, it's full-time, it's a full-time programme, 37 and a half hours a week. Um, and that's because um, you uh, must achieve 4,600 hours um, by the end of the three years of your programme, which is half in... Uh, clinical practice and half uh, in theoretical learning to be able to register as an adult nurse with the NMC uh, and successfully complete the program. The course runs over 42 weeks a year uh, which means that we um, allocate 10 weeks holidays throughout that year and I'll, I'll share um, an example of this with you um, a little bit further on in the presentation. You will do shift work whilst on placement. You'll do early shifts, late shifts and night shifts and some weekends. Um, and um, as, we, as I've said to you, the annual leave is, is preset uh, throughout the, um, the year to be able to give you that respite that you will need on a very uh, demanding course. Um, there's practice with a variety of placements, both in hospitals and community-based settings. And you will be supported by a practice assessor and supervisor when you're out there in clinical practice. We have an amazing relationship, I think, as Jackie's uh, mentioned, with our uh, practice providers. Um, and that relationship's really been built up over a significant number of years where um, we know that our students are um, highly welcomed into practice and they are uh, highly sought after upon qualification. So, the programme is based around the Future Nurse Training Standards, which the Nursing and Midwifery Council uh, published in 2018. And this was an update to nurse training within the United Kingdom, uh, the first update in about 11, 12 years. Um, and the NMC standards um, recommend that even though uh, um, this programme is adult nursing, 
that you will um, gain some exposure to um, other elements of nursing, such as the child, learning disability, mental health, uh, mother and baby, and that you will be less um, focused on a field uh, such as adult nursing and more have more generic outcomes. So all nurses, regardless of what field they work in, will have um, these real generic skills that can work across these, these boundaries. The new training standards are based around seven platforms, um, and you can see that the nurses, uh, by the end of your, your uh, course, um, the Nursing Midwifery Council believe that you, you should be an accountable professional, you should be able to promote health and prevent ill health, you should be able to assess the needs and plan the care of your patients. You should be able to evaluate that care. Um, and I think this is a, a real sea change within um, nursing within the United Kingdom, is that we believe that nurses should be leading and managing nursing care and working within those teams. And there's a real drive um, that nurses are now the leaders of the future. You will have a critical role uh, in improving safety and the quality of your patient's care and you will be coordinating that care. You may not be delivering all aspects of care, but you will be the coordinator. You will be really leading that, um, the, the care that that patient receives. So these are the new nurse training standards. They've been adopted across the United Kingdom, and we were um, one of the first universities to be an early adopter of these standards in 2019. The standards, um, and I put these nursing procedures in, um, and the reason I put these nursing procedures in, because you might think these, these, are, these are obvious procedures that nurses perhaps would undertake, is because I've, I've put the words in bold, um, as you can see here, the word interpret or interpreting. Um, we don't really want nurses anymore just to take observations, blood pressures. We don't want them just to take bloods and send the bloods off to the biochemistry labs anymore. We want them to be able to um, understand what those results mean. What do, that, what do those... Um, tasks, those interventions that we carry out, what do those results mean to the, the care of our patient? So you can see that the Nursing Midwifery Council believe that nurses should not just be um, somebody that undertakes tasks anymore, they should have a fundamental understanding of what those results mean and how the, those results will impact on that patient care. So you can see here these are just a number of um, different uh, procedures that the nurses will undertake throughout their nurse training and be assessed on. So what do you need to know about the course? Well, the program structure, we have a strong focus on clinical skills and the development of communication skills. It's absolutely key that as nurses, you're able to communicate not only with your patients, but within the wider um, um, interprofessional team that you will work with on a daily basis. We support you with the development of enhanced research and leadership skills. Uh, we have an increase in simulation-based assessment. So you've seen the simulation labs, the facilities that we have at Manchester Met, um, and we've increased the amount of simulation that we provide within that safe environment so that you can learn in a safe, um, supportive environment before you actually go out there uh, and undertake procedures on patients. You'll have the opportunity to undertake an elective placement, either local, national or international in a variety of fields of nursing. And we also um, run a, a number of different strands of nursing, so mental health nursing. And we also have a faculty that delivers um, courses like physiotherapy, speech and language therapy, social work. And we bring you together with those other students so that you can understand that actually as a nurse, you're not just um, providing that care. You may be actually coordinating the patient to other services that might support them during their pathway of care. The course in year one starts at level four and it's 120 credits. In year two, it is at level five, 120 credits. And in year three, it moves up to level six. So a, a slightly higher level and 120 credits. And um, really, year one is about laying the foundations. It's about bringing you to the university. It's about um, empowering you to uh, believe that you have the ability to succeed, to develop those core communication skills, to develop uh, the ability um, to be able to um, understand the essential aspects of patient care. And in year two, we start to apply all of that knowledge, all of that understanding, 
um, in year two and we want you to really begin to start to apply that in clinical practice and really step up a gear and in year three um, we want you then in year three not only to apply what you've learned over those two years but to critically evaluate it could we do anything differently um, could we um, is what we're delivering to our care uh, our patient the best possible care um, so we we over that three years, we develop you not only as a professional, but as an individual as well throughout that journey. In year one, we have um, units such as the introduction to nursing, effective communication, science and skills. So all of that core um, content that we've said, and we, we get you to think about becoming an accountable professional in practice. What is um, a professional? What does it mean? And in year two, we, um, work on the assessing the needs of your care, planning of the care, diversity in nursing, developing governance and practice and so on and so forth. And then in year three, we move up to that leading, managing and evaluating and the ability to be able to have an understanding of medicines management, uh, becoming um, able to look at evidence, latest research and apply that into clinical practice. Now, the Life in a year of a student, and this is just an example of the year planner for our September 19 cohort that started last year. So this is uh, just an example, but you, the course starts early on in September and it, it, it runs all the way through a full calendar year, all the way through to uh, September the following year. The red uh, blocks on the year planner um, denote the uh, time that you, are, that you spend in university or undertaking theoretical learning. The blue blocks represent the weeks, blue and pink blocks represent the weeks that you spend in clinical practice, so on placement or simulated based learning. And the yellow weeks there, you know, as you can see, the 10 weeks annual leave that are allocated throughout the year. And you can see that the first holidays um, uh, are given fairly early within the programme, so around October time. Um, over the uh, December period, the Christmas and New Year holidays, two weeks are given there and then another week in the in, in, in early spring um, two weeks then a bit further into spring and then we give um, for two to four weeks sometimes over the summer period of holidays how do we deliver the program we deliver the program in a variety of different ways we do lectures where we give a lecture to a large group of students so anatomy and physiology of the heart um, and then we break you off into small groups uh, and sometimes to do small group learning where we're looking at a particular scenario and how we can address that scenario. We do problem based learning groups. We do a lot of simulated practice, as you've seen in the video uh, earlier on in the presentation. And we also do um, online remote learning, live teaching as well throughout the, the, the course. You'll also be allocated a personal tutor when you start the program. That personal tutor will be with you for the full journey of your uh, of your three years with us on this on this course that personal tutor will support you with your development throughout that time when you are here not only your academic work but also pastoral support as well our personal tutors it's a fundamental role to make sure that you grow and develop as an individual as well as academically so where are our placements um, and our program delivery in practice well uh, for our adult nursing placements, we use the south of Greater Manchester. You'll see that there's a map here on the slide. So we don't allocate adult nursing students within Greater Manchester to the grey areas. So um, uh, adult nursing students don't go to Wigan, Bolton, Salford, Berry, Rochdale or Oldham. But we allocate our nursing adult nursing students to the south of Greater Manchester. So the bottom half of the map, uh, Trafford, Manchester area, Stockport, Tameside, and also go slightly into Cheshire, into Macclesfield as well. And across this coloured zone, there are a variety of general and specialist um, hospitals and community providers uh, that offer a real opportunity to get the breadth and depth of experience whilst you're on clinical practice, whilst you're out there in placement. You will be supported, as, as we've said, with practice assessors and supervisors. You will be expected to travel when you're on placements as well. And all of the practice elements of the programme, half of your programme, is assessed as it is when you're in university for your theoretical learning as well. So what are the entry requirements? Well, completed 104 NCUK uh, International Foundation Year points. 
have an equivalent of five subjects at grade C from high school qualification, including mathematics and a science subject. Um, obviously, the IELTS. We also accept the NCUK EAP with an overall of A and no section less than A. Um, IT related qualification, or we get you to complete a self questionnaire and application. Um, asking you whether you've got a mobile phone, do you use technology, have you got a computer, do you do things on the internet and so on and so forth. So that addresses that requirement. Um, you require a local police check and a DBS once you get um, into the UK. You need good character through references and you also are required to have an occupational health screen uh, when you uh, start on the course. So we do recommend for international, our international colleagues, students that we uh, recommend that you do get a doctor's note uh, just to provide information of your 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 satisfactory health to undertake the nursing program. So, um, having a little bit more of a think about the program, why choose nursing at Manchester now? And really, to build on what Jackie has already said, um, we've won multiple awards, as you saw on the first slide, since um, really since 2012, we've been shortlisted or won awards in the Student Nursing Times category. Um, in the United Kingdom and we've been very proud of that as that's been voted for by our practice partners or students. We sit 17th out of 71 nursing departments in the uh, Guardian University Guide, complete university guide with 20 out of 72 and they measure slightly different things, second highest rated school in Greater Manchester. We have the highest overall satisfaction uh, of any English nursing school in 2019-2020 with 98% overall student satisfaction and we've got 100% employability for our graduates moving into professional nursing roles um, uh, upon qualification. Staff retain close links with clinical practice, um, Jackie um, uh, and I still have a real um, a contact with clinical practice, still work in clinical practice and most of our team have um, um, contracts with clinical practice to be able to maintain those skills to be delivering a contemporary nursing program. You'll get good support in practice areas from both teaching and practice staff and um, as you've seen the clinical skills facilities on site are amazing, um, real, real state-of-the-art facilities to be able to deliver mannequins that breathe, feel pain, sleep, uh, become conscious, uh, get better and so on and so forth to help you along that three year of your journey. We also offer elective and specialist study options within the curriculum. We offer the acute illness management course as well, which is an additional um, qualification, um, which if you're going to work in a, an acute type environment, it's really useful um, and really gives you a step up above students that go to other universities. We offer the mental health first aid certificate to all our students as well. And we also offer MACTON training, which is uh, a adapted form of, um, of, of sign language communication uh, with a variety of different individuals, not just people that have hearing impairment, uh, to be able to help you communicate with a, ra a, a range of service users. And these are additional to the uh, BSc uh, Honours Adult Nursing uh, degree that you will get to be really to be able to help you with your employability. And I think that, that's demonstrated by our 100% employability rate. We give all our nursing students on the start of the programme a preloaded um, tablet. So um, we give them an Android tablet to be able to use those tablets in lectures and for research and on placement. And we also um, um, enrol all of our students once they've been made an offer on a social network before they start the programme. Um, our students start in this September. So in uh, about five weeks time, we've got uh, 300 students on that social network uh, site, they've been on there for a number of months now, chatting to one another, getting to know one another before they start their programme, which is absolutely brilliant and really fundamental. It's a fundamental part, really, of building those relationships up on a course like such as nursing. So, um, application uh, process is through UCAS, the UCAS system. The nursing team uh, will shortlist against uh, application criteria. Personal statement and reference is absolutely crucial. You really need to have a look at our website. You need to have a look at um, what, what is recommended to be put in a personal statement. Um, once you've been shortlisted for an interview um, or declined on UCAS, um, if, if, if your application doesn't meet the criteria, um, if you are invited for an interview, you'll have an interview conducted on Skype. 
There'll be a patient-focused video re uh, to review prior to the interview, and the interview will be a one-to-one -one with an academic or our practice colleagues. Any offer that we make will be subject to the whole application, what experience have you got, what was your personal statement score, and so on and so forth. And you have to present, present all original qualifications. So anything that you are saying on your application that you have, you have to present all of those um, prior to the start of the programme. It is a professional programme. Uh, it's regulated by the Nursing Midwifery Council and it's judged as such. So things like Facebook, emails and social media, we always make our students aware of the um, um, requirement really to uh, present this professional uh, persona um, and all offers are subject to police and DBS checks as we've said. Our program is really based around putting the patient at the heart of everything that we do, see the person behind the patient and as you can see this image on the screen which is an image from one of our big hospitals not very far from the university and uh, this is a, a true image, this isn't an actor this wasn't asked, they weren't asked to pose for this, was this our camera um, man took this picture uh, just by chance um, when they were uh, spending a day at the hospital. And this to me really demonstrates what we want to achieve in the delivery of our programme at Manchester Met is that the patient remains at the centre of everything that we do. And you can see here by this image that that nurse and that patient clearly have that, um, that connection as um, and that empathy and that care and that compassion uh, towards her patient. So what do we look for in a healthcare professional? So this is really key in terms of helping you develop your personal statement. We want somebody that can demonstrate in their statement the ability to be compassionate, caring, have great empathy, um, great communication and interpersonal skills. Nursing is about being able to communicate. That's really one of the most fundamental requirements of our programme that we need to start with. If we've got that as the foundation, we can build on that going forward. The ability to put people at ease, the ability to represent the views of another person, to think outside the box. Um, it might be that the policy or the procedure says that we do um, this in a, a certain way, but actually um, it might not work for our particular patient, so we may need to adjust that have the ability to understand what care delivery is and the skills and knowledge of the needs of, of patients that we care for, and the ability to promote health and well-being. We also want you to demonstrate in your personal statement the ability to, how you work within a team. Have you had a, a job, a part-time job, or have you been at college, or uh, so on and so forth, or at school did you work within teams there? Did you lead those teams? Did you, um, how did you work with other people? So again, being able to bring this through in your personal statement. So personal statements, we need insight into the course that you've applied for is absolutely crucial. Please, please refer, I can't stress this enough, to the University Prospectus page. Um, what we want you to think about in your personal statement is about skill mix, about different, different roles. Particularly within England, there are registered nurses and they're now nursing associates. Nursing associates are slightly, they work slightly below a registered nurse. Uh, but they complement the whole healthcare team. And it's about understanding the team that you're working with. So think about the skill mix and think about being able to convey this within your personal statement. The future nurse training standards are really important. If you want to come and study within the UK, um, all nursing courses now are uh, um, um, guided by the future nurse training standards. Have a look at those. Think about the seven platforms I talked to you about at the beginning of the presentation and see if you can weave some of that terminology into the personal statement. The NHS long-term plan is key. Obviously when you're out on placement you will be out on NA, NA, you'll be working out there on NHS placements and it's really key that you have an understanding of the, 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 the NHS long-term plan and the vision um, of the nurse's role within that. Compassion in practice, the six C's, care, compassion, commitment, communication, so on and so forth. It's a strategy within um, the United Kingdom uh, developed by the Chief Nursing Officer talking about how we put our patients at the centre of everything we do. Um, again, I think is really key is the, the five-year forward uh, plan for mental health. Mental health just doesn't affect mental health nurses doing that particular course. It's, it's appropriate for adult nurses as well undertaking their course about thinking about the psychological and the physical needs of their patients and about being able to convey that. Again, there's the NHS core values. These are slightly different to the other areas that I've talked to you about. Think about respect and dignity, everybody counts, commitment to quality care, 
working together for patients, compassion and improving lives. Can you weave this into your personal statement? And again, the code is really important, the Nursing Midwifery Council code, that every registered nurse within the United Kingdom um, works towards, abides by, and certainly as a student coming to do a student nursing programme, that our programme is fundamentally underpinned by this, this code of professional standards. So again, have a look at this and have an understanding of it. So remember the minimum qualifications are only the minimum. Ensure the form is completed correctly, legible and contains all your qualifications. Really provide a concise and relevant reason why you wish to undertake the programme. Your first line of your personal statement should be, I'm applying for adult nursing because, and then go in to talk about some of the areas that I presented to you in this, in this presentation. Pro provide evidence of insight into your chosen career and provide details of an academic or professional reference. It can't be friends or family. And if you can gain some practical experience, um, whether that's uh, voluntary experience, whether that's paid experience, it's really useful, I think, to help you in terms of that transition to University at Manchester Met. And that's my very brief uh, presentation. I hope you found it useful. And um, I will hand back to Ray, and then we can take any questions that you may have. So thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Neil. Uh, I'm just going to flip back now. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about, I suppose, what happens if you can't actually get to Manchester Met directly. Um, like you've heard a lot there from Neil in terms of how important certain things are. I suppose just to pick up from where I was talking, uh, we've over 30 different nationalities of student at DIFC each year. So there will be students from all over the world sitting beside you. Um, I suppose the questions you probably want answered, well, you know, why should I study foundation? Purely and simply, um, it's because you've applied to somewhere like Manchester Met and you can't get direct entry, or you know from your high school or your uh, diploma or degree you don't meet the entry requirements. So I suppose the first reason is you would get a chance to improve your English level uh, if you don't meet the IELTS requirement. As Neil mentioned, um, Manchester Met will accept the EAP grade at DIFC instead of IELTS. So you don't have to take an additional IELTS test or it could be improving your academic levels. Um, also, there's a very simple reason which is adjusting to weather, food, culture, environment, making friends, feeling comfortable in a Western education culture, uh, all of which are different to what you're experiencing in your home country. But I suppose the two biggest reasons where we're um, to touch on the points that Neil, have made, Neil has made is one, they don't just want nurses now to just do, the, do the, the core duties. They're looking for them to interpret, which he spoke a lot about. And we will teach you that independent learning at DIFC, which will help you when you get to Manchester Met to be able to stand on your own two feet. Um, the personalised counselling and support at DIFC is probably one of our most valuable features in terms of preparing your personal statement. Uh, Neil spoke about how important that is and making sure that you have all the documentation correct to allow you to apply successfully to Manchester Met. We will help you to put all of that together. And then I suppose very simply what you'll study at DIFC. So you will, uh, it'll be a mix of theory and practicals. There will be lab practicals, a lot of interactive discussions and doing those kind of soft skills like critical thinking, problem solving, uh, presenting. So standing up in front of your classmates and your peers and actually presenting. Time management. So it helps you to get through your coursework and your exams. Uh, and the final grade at DIFC is a combination of those as you can see. So it's not just a final exam. You can't sail through the year and just take an exam at the end. 30% is based on your coursework with 70% on your exams. So to progress to nursing at undergraduate level, you would study four core subjects, which will be EAP, English for Academic Purposes, Mathematics, uh, Biology, and Chemistry. So then uh, another program that uh, Manchester Met were talking about was on the postgraduate side. 
And I know that we have some students here that already are studying degrees or studying diplomas. And this will be really important to you guys. So there's two real options in terms of studying at DIFC leading to Manchester Met. The first, which is our pre-master's program. And if you have a bachelor's degree, that would lead on to a master's of nursing. If you have, if you're studying a diploma, then as you heard Jackie speaking about the top up program, where you can actually top up to a degree. And um, if you have a three year diploma and also you're a, qualified, a, a registered nurse in your home country. So maybe you can progress directly to Manchester Met, but maybe you can't and you need to upgrade your English level and um, where you don't qualify. But the pre-masters is so much more than that. It's not just about upgrading your English or improving your English level. We will teach you things like research methods, data analysis, annotations, how to structure a dissertation. Um, and again, going back to what I said at undergraduate level, it's talking about that support and everything to make sure that your application to MMU, your personal statements, um, and all of your documents are correct in terms of making your application successful. And then as Jackie spoke about, it comes down to then the employability. And with MMU, you have a two year stay back option after you've completed your studies and you can get that valuable international work experience if you progress on to Northampton and um, to successfully register to work in the UK. So really, DIFC is more than a pathway. It's, it's not just a simple foundation program. And we would help you every step of the way, as you can see. I'm not expecting you to remember everything on this screen. Um, but we will really walk you through everything in terms of the application process. From the time you arrive at DIFC, in terms of planning, in terms of the research, uh, where you want to study, including Manchester Met. Um, helping you structure that personal statement, which you've heard now is so important. Our university fair every February, where we actually have all of our partner universities, including Manchester Met, will come to Dublin to actually sit down and talk to students one-on-one. -on -one. So you get that opportunity to speak to them about the application process, what to expect when you get to Manchester, and you can talk things about uh, working during your study program and also the post-study work opportunities as well in the UK. So the entry requirements at uh, undergraduate level uh, would be, it depends on which country you're coming from. So we have country specific requirements across the globe. And then there are the generic programs like IGCSEs, A-levels, uh, AS, IB, uh, those types of programs. So you're best to actually contact us directly uh, and we can have that conversation with you. Um, in terms of the English language, so uh, IELTS 5.0 is the entry requirement to study at DIFC if you start in September, or 5.5 .5 if you join our January intake. This year specifically, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we are also accepting Duolingo, which is a completely online English test, because to get an English test like IELTS or TOEFL or Pearson uh, has been very challenging. So if you want to take the Duolingo test, it's acceptable for admission purposes and also acceptable uh, for visa purposes with immigration too. The score required is 80 for September entry and 90 for January entry at DIFC. Some specific points just to make you very aware of, uh, again, due to COVID-19. So this September we're starting uh, online because right now it's not safe for a lot of countries to travel here. And student safety is the probably the most important thing that we have each year with our students. And it's paramount that we make sure this is our number one priority. So for students, they will start semester one online until December, and then they will join in class in January um, until the end of May, start of June. If you start in January with our second intake, that will be a completely in-class experience, and it would run from January until July. We're offering some scholarships this year. So we're offering a 2,000 euro scholarship at undergraduate level. And if you're looking for the top up program or uh, also if you want to progress to a master's and you have a bachelor's degree, we're offering a 3,000 euro scholarship on our pre-master's program. I'm pleased to announce last week that we've also decided to extend these scholarships to our January intake as well. Um, 
I just mentioned about the Duolingo test. So if you don't have IELTS or you can't get an IELTS test uh, because a lot of the centers have been closed worldwide, please don't worry. The Duolingo test is very easy and we can help you through that whole process. And the biggest thing, I suppose, for a lot of students is the worry that my uh, high school exams have been cancelled or they've been postponed uh, around the world. You know, certainly in some countries, A-levels have been postponed. Uh, WIAC, they just actually announced in Africa that WIAC will start in August, um, where previously that had been uncertain. So DIFC and the NCUK uh, made the decision much earlier this year that we would accept predicted high school grades by looking at your year 10, year 11, uh, and first semester of year 12 transcripts. So again, the best thing is to, is to contact us directly and we can give you the advice that's just um, applicable to you. In terms of the actual fees at DIFC, so you can see the fees there on the screen, uh, you would be taking leading to nursing the health science program uh, at undergraduate level and uh, there's a 2,000 euro scholarship off those fees as I mentioned. If you're looking at the postgraduate side, um, our top up program, then the fees are actually 15,600 with a 3,000 euro scholarship to come off those fees. Uh, we do offer a payment policy where you can pay in installments uh, once you pay at least half the fees up front, which is a, an immigration requirement um, set by the Irish government. So in terms of just the whole application process, what you would do is you would actually submit your application, um, which you can do online or you can send documents directly to uh, one of me, me or one of my colleagues. Uh, we issue your offer letter, then you can confirm your place with uh, payment of fees and your signed acceptance uh, form. Then start your studies with DIFC after you've booked your flights, accommodation, and in terms of, if you're coming from a country that's a visa required country, uh, we will help you through the whole visa process as well. So please feel free to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, and from there, I'm actually gonna stop the screen share as well. And I'm gonna flip back to just see if there's any questions. Um, so, uh, Neil and Jackie, we've got a question here from uh, one of my best agents in Nigeria, Espelum Spring, mm -hmm. and they're basically asking, can a student with a degree in microbiology, a, a 2-2 uh, from Nigeria, yeah. make a direct, a direct application to nursing? Um, no. So what no. No, I think um, the, uh, so that will be for our pre-registration um, master's course. And the 2-2 the two, two grade is brilliant and absolutely fantastic. And it's great that it's in microbiology. So that's fantastic. Um, but they have to apply through UCAS. All of our pre-registration courses um, are, um, so the pre-reg MSc and the pre-reg BSc are coming through UCAS. So um, UCAS um, for that particular course reopens on the 3rd of September and is open until November for a January start. But absolutely, uh, we, we have had, we've had a lot of international students applying for the two year course. So she's put, uh, the other part of the question is, it, the duration of the study, will it be reduced? Yes, it's two years. So it's still pre-learning work to do on that particular course before they start. Because if you remember back to the uh, initial part of the presentation I did, You've got to do 4,600 hours um, to be able to uh, graduate with the with, with with the award. So, because you're doing a pre-registration masters in two years rather than three, the student has to bring a thousand hours to that particular program. 500 is through clinical practice placed. Um, experience or exposure that could be paid or voluntary and 500 hours is related to theoretical learning but because the uh, first degree is in microbiology we'll accept that as 500 hours towards it so it would just be 500 hours it's worth having a look at our prospectus page i'll copy and paste the link into the chat now uh, okay, because uh, there's more information available yeah yeah and i think um just for um people to be aware like would it would it two two uh, first degree, 
it's very unlikely that they would actually require DIFC or a pre-master's program. The only proviso to that would be if their English grade wasn't good enough, because I'm, I'm guessing they will need at least 6.5 IELTS. To, they would, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, and that, that's the only real area, I suppose, for Nigerian students or African students in general to be aware that if their English level wasn't strong enough, um, the pre-masters could be really of benefit to the student. But if their English level is good enough, they could make that application directly to Manchester Met. Okay, are there any further questions from any of the students that are online? I know there are a couple of students there. So just in case people are typing, uh, I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes where uh, students can ask any further questions uh, if you want to type them into the chat. Or alternatively, if you want to take yourself off mute, uh, you can ask a question directly to either myself or to Jackie or Neil from uh, Manchester Met, if that suits you better. So Neil and Jackie, there's another question for you guys because um, we've spoken quite a bit about IELTS uh, and especially this year, you know, with the, the situation around the whole IELTS testing. Um, do Manchester Met accept any other English test instead of IELTS, please? I think, I think well, I'll let Jackie speak about the, the top up, but certainly for um, the adult nursing pre-registration BSc and MSc, um, obviously we would, um, for, for the BSc we would accept um, the English um, from the foundation year, as we've said, so we would yeah. accept that. Yeah. Um, in, term, in terms of uh, the, other, the other courses, it's got to be IELTS okay. or, the, or the OET. We do know that there is, um, the university are accepting um, uh, uh, an adapted version of IELTS um, that is, I can't remember what the course is called now, but there is a an adapted uh, where you can do the IELTS completely online at the moment. Um, so I know the university put that in place um, through a, a recognised provider, but again, it would still be the, the same uh, grade that would be required. I'm not sure about you, Jackie, if you would consider anything else. Does it need to be? Does it need to be the UK VI, or is the academic IELTS also acceptable? The academic IELTS is also acceptable. Okay, thanks, Jackie. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we use the um, university admissions uh, procedure, so that's a little bit more flexible um, at this at the point of the top up degree. Um, and we've lowered our entry to six in writing, 6.5 um, overall um, as a minimum requirement for the course. So that hopefully will make it more ac accessible. Um, but obviously, if they're moving, they're going to think about registration in the UK, then, you know, we'll be providing them support to get um, up to seven. Yeah, um, like if the students are coming on a pathway through DIFC, you know, for the top up, then obviously you'll accept the EAP grade from DIFC as well um, yeah. as an option. So, yes, that's my understanding, yeah. Yeah, um, another question that's coming in there is just the total duration of study. So if you had a student at undergraduate level, they would take the foundation program at DIFC, which will either be nine months or seven months. And then for the BSc program, Neil, it's a three-year program, right? That's correct, yeah. And if it's the top up, Jackie, you It's one year, one full year. So January to the end of December 2021. And we're also, we're running two cohorts a year, occurrences, January and September. Okay. It's a full year. Super. Okay. Well, look, um, I would just like to say a huge thank you to Manchester Metropolitan for their time this morning. Um,
Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Jackie. I really appreciate uh, the time you've given to us today. And um, hopefully we can encourage some students to apply to the pathway to DIFC to get to Manchester Met. And I'm sure you might have some students who might uh, apply directly to Manchester Met as well uh, as we try and continue uh, to grow this relationship to develop pathways for nursing. So uh, thanks, everybody, for attending. And if anybody requires any further information, please feel free to contact us directly. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much, Neil and Jackie. Oh, sorry, and thanks, Narly, as well. I forgot you were there. Ha! Huh. I was just looking in the background. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank See you later. Thank you.